people who enjoy lovely things, my name is Rach and there aren't many video game franchises out there which are as influential and immediately recognisable as the Pokemon series. The game started off pretty simple, but the mechanics became more sophisticated in later generations. A cultural phenomenon, knowledge of Pokemon has become pretty commonplace in the West and even more so in Japan. But there's always loads of interesting, obscure stuff floating around about any franchise, so here's a chunky list of more obscure things that a far-fetched can shake a stick at. These are 20 mind-blowing things you didn't know about Pokemon. Number 20. Pokemon went to the World Cup Usually there isn't much football in Pokemon and there certainly isn't much Pokemon in football, but when Japan went to Brazil in the summer of 2014, they took along a fair few characters for the ride. In total, 11 of the characters were featured as official mascots for the Japanese football team, due to an agreement between Nintendo and Adidas, who were Japan's official kit sponsor and provider. Number 19. Lickitung couldn't actually lick the main thing you notice about Lickitung's appearance is that giant tongue sticking out of its mouth, it's kinda hard to miss. Back in generation 1 though, it had absolutely no use for this masterpiece of evolution. It couldn't learn the move Lick. Presumably it just left its tongue flopping about there on the floor, just wondering what to do with it. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> insert a Jules mum joke here. Fortunately, Lickitung managed to learn how to actually use its signature physiology in generation 2. Number 18. Pokemon is based on insect collecting The initial concept for Pokemon was thought up by Satoshi Taijiri, founder and current CEO of Game Freak. It turns out that a significant amount of his inspiration for the series came from a hobby he loved as a child, finding and collecting insects. He was obsessed with insects, he was constantly looking for new types of bug and inventing new ways to catch them. This explains why so many of the first Pokemon you encounter in the games are bug types, as a memorial to the creatures that inspired the series. Number 17. Technically, Shuckle is the most powerful Pokemon. Shuckle and their hard shells sport both the highest base defense and special defense and also one of the lowest base attacks. Surprisingly, it is also the Pokemon which can potentially deal the most damage ever in a single attack. Through a set of specific circumstances, Shuckle can utilize Power Trick, a move which swaps around its attack and defense stats and if the stars align, it can actually deal an incredible 481,266,036 damage with a single attack. And just for reference, the maximum possible HP is Blissey's 741. Number 16. Jinx was accidentally offensive Nowadays, Jinx can be seen with a purple face and hands, but that wasn't the original colour scheme. Jinx's original form had blue gloves, but most importantly, its face was black rather than purple. Naturally, many people saw this as fairly offensive, and Nintendo were forced to go back and change their design into the one that we see today. It's still pretty hideous, but at least it isn't racially insensitive. Number 15. There's a Pokemon in all of us Scientists are a weird bunch, and they come up with crazy names for their discoveries. In 2008, one such science team based in Japan discovered a protein which helps people to see properly. This protein was given the name Pikachurin, apparently because the protein is really good with electricity and mimics Pikachu's lightning fast moves and shocking electric effects. Number 14. The SSN truck was hiding something after all. One of the most famous rumours of the original red and blue versions was that the truck outside the dock where the SSN was parked in Vermilion City could be moved to reveal a Mew, which of course was untrue. But when the remakes of Fire Red and Leaf Green were released, Game Freak hid a rare lava cookie beneath the truck, and in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, a revive medicine will spawn there daily. Still not Mew, but at least it's something. Number 13. The Pope Liked Pokemon with its themes of evolution and depiction of monsters, the Pokemon games were seen by some devout Christians as a bad influence to children, especially in the very conservative parts of the world. That all changed in the year 2000, when Pope John Paul II gave the series his blessing, stating that it was full of inventive imagination, didn't contain any harmful moral side effects, and were based on ties of intense friendship. Wholesome. Number 12. The manga is surprisingly brutal. 
The Pokemon anime is a show primarily aimed at children. The manga, though, is a completely different beast. The battles in the manga are seriously hardcore when compared to the TV series and the games. Where Pokemon merely faint in those worlds, in the manga, battles can result in Pokemon actually dying. A relatively infamous scene from the Adventures manga shows an Arbok being sliced cleanly in half. A different scene shows a frozen Magmar being shattered into pieces by the evil Giovanni. Number 11. Pikachu was never meant to be the series mascot. Pikachu is usually the first one that springs to mind whenever Pokemon is mentioned, but Nintendo didn't intend for that to be the case. They were ready to have a completely different creature as the official mascot, Clefairy. At the last minute, the decision was reversed and Pikachu was installed as the mascot instead. This was mostly influenced by the fans as the anime was very popular at the time. Can you imagine if shy little Clefairy had been Ash's starter instead? That's such a strange thought. Number 10. You can breed a whale with a kitten. Whalelord is the largest Pokemon in the games. It's so big that it's a surprise it even needs to battle at all. It could just simply sit on anything it didn't like. Whalelord is actually in the same egg group as Skitty, meaning that they can mate and produce an egg if left at the daycare together. It's also in the same egg group as Diglett, a tiny 20 centimeter tall mole even smaller than Skitty. Yes, that means they can all breed together and produce children, and no, I have no idea how that's going to work. Number 9. Pokemon was featured on Currency the country of Niwe is a little island in the South Pacific. In 2001, they released a series of five coins featuring Pokemon characters, and not just to collect, they were used as proper money. The $1 coin featured Pikachu on the front. Other coins with Charmander, Squirtle, Bulbasaur, and Meowth on the front were also released. Niwe has also had Star Wars-themed currency, so whoever is in charge of the money over there clearly has impeccable taste. Number 8. Every Spinda is unique. Spinda isn't very powerful and it isn't very rare, but it is very special because every single one of them is different. Every Spinda you encounter in game has a slightly different pattern to all of the others. How many different combinations are there? Well, research suggests that there's 4,294,967,295 different possibilities for Spinda markings. And if you include shinies, that number doubles. Gotta catch them all? Number 7. There's a $200,000 trading card. One card in the Pokemon trading card game is considered one of the rarest cards to ever be printed in any card game. The Pokemon Illustrator card was awarded to the winners of the card game illustration contest in Japan. Just 39 of these cards were ever printed and one has just sold on eBay for $195,000. This is four times the amount that the last Pokemon Illustrator card reached at auction in 2013, which went for only $54,970. Only. Number 6. Some Pokemon learn moves that make no sense. Game Freak has a peculiar habit of giving Pokemon attacks which either make no sense or are totally pointless. One of the more famous ones is Surf, which can be learnt by the very rocky Agron and Tyranitar. Shedinja can learn Final Gambit, sacrificing itself to deal damage equal to its HP, of course, the problem being that Shedinja only has one HP. Cryogonal learns Attract, even though it is genderless and therefore Attract will never succeed, and then there are moves like Splash and Hold Hands, which do absolutely nothing. Majestic levels of trolling, Game Freak, Prithi bin thine fine selves. Number 5. Yuri Geller sued Kadabra. Remember Yuri Geller, that spoon-bending self-professed psychic? In 2000, he took Nintendo to court, claiming that they had appropriated his identity and image without asking permission. It turns out that he was just really angry about Kadabra's trading card. He claimed they'd made him into an evil occult Pokemon character. Geller lost, of course, but it's not a coincidence that since the lawsuit, Kadabra has never been reprinted as a card, and it has only appeared in the anime series once. Nobody tell Geller about Alakazam. Number 4. There is a zombie Pokemon. Paras is a crab-type creature with mushrooms sprouting out of it. Nothing too unusual about that in the world of Pokemon. Unluckily for the poor crab, they are parasitic. When Paras evolves into Parasect, the dastardly fungus engulfs its entire body and takes over, as you can see from the lack of pupils. The fungus does all the thinking and moving, leaving the crab part zombified and lifeless. All it does is take hits from other Pokemon to protect the mushroom part. Whoa, super creepy. 
Number 3. Game Freak hides references to an earlier game in Pokemon even though Game Freak are best known for the Pokemon series, they did make games before that. One of these was the platformer Pulseman, which was only released in America and Europe on the Wii Virtual Console. But Game Freak keep hiding references to it in Pokemon. In Diamond and Pearl, Rotom was introduced, which looks very similar to the protagonist of Pulseman. The villains of the game are Team Galactic or Galaxy Gang in Japan. Who are the bad guys in Pulseman? The Galaxy Gang. Finally, Pulseman's signature move is the Volt Tekker, What's Pikachu's signature move these days? Volt Tackle. Number 2. Kangaskhan's baby was going to be its own Pokemon. Kangaskhan is an absolute goldmine for rumours. Apparently she was originally going to be Cubone's final evolution, but it was scrapped at the last minute and the unused code became missing though. But this rumour has been debunked. What is clear though is that the two were very definitely related in the initial game concepts. From early designs, Kangaskhan babies were originally going to be a separate Pokemon to the mother. If the mother fainted a set number of times, she would die, and her baby would take her skull and evolve into a Cubone, rather than a Kangaskhan. Number 1. Pokemon was meant to end a long time ago As you know, Pokemon is a phenomenally successful series. It's a multi-billion dollar industry all across the world. But for the president of the Pokemon company in Japan, it was never meant to become that big of a deal. The game series was meant to end with the release of Gold and Silver. According to a 2010 interview, he saw Gold and Silver as the finish line, completing the major series starting from Red and Blue. Fortunately for fans, the success of the sequels made him rethink his decision, culminating in the series running through until the present day. And that's our list. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name has been Rach. You can follow me on Twitter if you like at Don't Rage Quit. Remember to subscribe for more lists like this every single day. Take care, guys. You're awesome.